Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay. So, the last of the three lectures on uh, trigonometry and spherical trigonometry. So, here I will be exclusively dealing with uh, spherical trigonometry, which I had started in the previous lecture. So, we will consider the celestial sphere and the coordinate systems. So, then the declination formula, which is a, a very important formula. Then, what are known as 10 problems in Tanta Sangraha, Dasha Prashnaha, and a typical example and then a distance between solar and lunar disks. Okay. So, a spherical triangle is formed by the intersection of three great circles on the surface of a sphere. I had uh, mentioned it uh, in the previous lecture. So, this is one great circle passing through A C. So, then this is another great circle and this is another great circle. So, great circle means a circle whose center is the center of the sphere. So, there may be circles whose center is not the like if you consider a circle somewhere here, its center is not the center of sphere. So, that is called a small circle. So, in uh, the various relations, it is only these arcs uh, 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 which are you know coming from great circles uh, arcs, they are the, you know important and they give useful relations. So, that is why we consider that. So, we had written like this also yesterday. <coughs> And there are several formulae connecting the sides and angles of a spherical triangle. So, if A B C, suppose if A B C is a spherical uh, triangle, see here the <coughs> in a spherical triangle both are almost the same status. See in plane triangle, remember the sides are lengths and these are uh, angles whereas, here both the sides and uh, uh, these thing angles are angles kind of a thing roughly. Of course, they are, they are arcs we are always always discussing with arcs. So, this is a circular arc. So, B C is a circular arc it is not a straight line and it is a part of a circle whose uh, arc length is small a and the angle between these you know tangents to this A B you know this arc and the tangent to A C. So, that that angle is a spherical angle, it is called a spherical angle on uh, of the spherical triangle. So, similarly, you can uh, the three spherical angles and three uh, sides A, B, C. So, then there is a famous law called cosines, law of cosines. So, cos of A is equal to cos B cos C plus sin B sin C cos A. And clearly, there are two companions to the above formula because cyclic symmetry, you know. You go A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to A. So, then you will have three more, uh, two more relations like this the cosine formula. Okay. And similarly, <coughs> next there is a very, uh, very important cosine formula is used all the time in modern uh, spherical trigonometry. And the sine formula also relation between ratio of the sides to that of angles of spherical triangle called sin a by sin a. See here remember that in triangle it is like this here in spherical uh, triangle sin a sin small a by sin capital A is equal to sin small b by sin capital B is equal to sin small c by sin capital C. So, when the sides a b c are small it is quite evident that the above formula reduces to this which is the sin formula for a plane triangle. Okay. So, this <coughs> this sin formula is used in uh, Indian trigonometry, Indian spherical trigonometry at various times, but um, cosine formula is never used. I mean, it is never, you know, used as such. Of course, what are equivalents of cosine formula will be there. Obviously, they needed that, so they will get the same results as what is got from cosine formula, but they do it in a different way. Okay, so these are simple things about spherical uh, uh, triangles. 
but those simple they, they are you know they can get give very interesting results even about um, 40 50 years back even pancharatnam using the properties of these things he could you know get some interesting very important result in optics by analyzing this you know this light rays and all that and which are related to uh, a spherical triangle in some way so he got a, a new result a new geometrical phase called pancharatnam phase it was quite simple result but very interesting and uh, very geometrical and has got very nice significance and very elegant results you can get even now if you understand okay so now <coughs> we are of course not interested in those things we are interested in astronomy so we how do i mean how does one particular individual view the celestial sphere so that is important so there is observer and we are situated on the earth so we have to uh, this relation must be clear so all the celestial objects seem to be situated on the surface of a sphere a very large radius with the observer at the center that's what we observe right so when you observe the sky so we see that all the sun moon planets and stars so they are all moving in the some large you know sphere which is blue okay in on which hemisphere and uh, they are all moving in that and this is the celestial sphere so though fictitious the celestial sphere is the basic tool in discussing the motion both diurnal and relative of celestial objects so what is diurnal the daily motion of the each of these objects and what is relative relative motion among them so that is the sun moon etc move in the background of stars so that relative um, motion also is very important so in this figure this is the of course the earth and is the equator of the earth and is observer so observer you see when you see the sky obviously he will see only the upper part right because the lower part is hidden you know because he can't see here because earth will obstruct him so only half the number of stars half the number not uh, number but half the part of the sky he will see so that is this thing this uh, hemisphere we will uh, we'll, i will uh, uh, show the figure corresponding to that and this is the axis of rotation of the earth okay so the pq so this is the direction of earth spin we know now that it is uh, rotating okay and uh, you can uh, from the observer you can draw a line parallel to this so that is the apparent direct, this is the uh, towards the celestial pole there will be hardly any difference is even op2 and cp1 because this is of the order of about uh, uh, 6000 kilometers whereas the uh, stars etc are millions of miles away i mean so so this will be almost you know this will be you can take it as parallel so this relation so you are this um suppose the, this is the latitude of the place if this is the latitude of the place so that is it is um, uh, uh, the person is um, at an angle phi with respect to the uh, equator so that is the latitude the important thing is the altitude of the north pole is equal to the latitude of the place this is a fundamental result very simple result in astronomy okay so that is how much this north pole is above the horizon okay that is the lower part of the sky so that will be equal to the latitude of the place so for chennai it may be only 11 degrees and uh, for delhi it will be nearly 25 or 26 or whatever degrees you see so the altitude of the uh, <coughs> uh, north pole at a place is equal to the latitude of the place okay so in the celestial sphere the c is the uh, come to this Uh, here c is the center of the earth then o is the observer on the surface of the earth whose northerly latitude is phi and we have drawn a tangential plane at the location of the, the observer and this this is the horizon this is called the horizon you know this horizon is written, written as a line like that but it will be actually a big circle where the sky and the earth seem to meet is at a far away distance so that is the horizon called kshitija in indian astronomy and earth as the earth rotates about the axis it appears as if the entire celestial sphere rotates in the opposite direction about p1 okay line op2 is parallel to cp1 so it looks like as if the whole thing is and everything is rotating around this axis so that is what it was clearly stated by aryabhatiya also 
in his uh, aryabhata in his aryabhati yeah. he says that you know just like you know people in a boat they you know they will see the objects on the bank move backwards but actually you are moving forward in a boat so similarly the all the celestial objects they seem to be rotating from eastern portion to western portion but it actually due to the rotation of the earth and you know stars are fixed essentially and uh, the motion is due to the motion of the earth rotation of the earth okay so celestial spheres uh, celestial pole and the latitude are written that so this how you know this is the fundamental figure which comes in all the uh, calculations so this is the observer i will uh, o and this is the horizon okay and this is the axis of rotation the direction of the axis of rotation of the earth the topmost point is called zenith and the lowermost point is called nadir nadir is that is in the uh, terminology used in uh, modern uh, this thing this okay so this is how it is so this is a hemisphere which you see so this is a celestial sphere for an observer in the northern hemisphere with latitude 5 so now to specify a point you know on the this thing for any kind of a accurate description you should have some accurate ways of describing it okay so how do you locate the position of a point on the surface of the earth okay so essentially we will specify it by uh, by we will uh, we can um, know the coordinate of a place on the earth by specifying its latitude and longitude right so this is the earth okay and suppose so this is the north pole north pole this is the south pole okay so then suppose this is the this is a reference plane celestial equator so this phi this angle so that is called a latitude of the place and uh, longitude so that will depend upon you have to give some reference line you see So there is no absolute significance to that. Nowadays, we take you know this uh, the uh, the great circle passing through Greenwich from the North Pole to South Pole. Is it take the great circle arc? Is great circle in a semicircle between North Pole and uh, South Pole, which is passing through Greenwich. Okay, so that is called a standard meridian, meridian nowadays, and this angle. so this is called the longitude right so the longitude of uh, earth is uh, sorry uh, chennai will be around 80 degrees or something like that so this is the longitude and latitude is around 11 degrees so latitude and longitude you see you can do it in some other way you see you can take this as a reference plane okay and you do you can point it and do it in some other way but they will not be useful this is what is useful okay but in celestial sphere when you describe the motion of celestial objects there are many there are, uh, not one but uh, two three who are which are quite useful okay so just as one uses latitude and longitude two numbers to specify any location on the surface of the earth so also one employs different coordinate system to specify the location of celestial objects on the celestial sphere at any instant so we know explain three commonly employed coordinate systems the horizontal system the equatorial system and the ecliptic system so this is the here the horizontal system or the also called altazimuth system the fundamental plane is the circle is the horizon so that is the fundamental uh, this thing and pole of the circle is uh, zenith or nadir and the coordinates that are used are altitude and azimuth okay so that is suppose this is the fundamental circle for this earth i uh, know position on, on the surface of the earth so this is the equator is the reference plane and this north pole south pole are the reference poles okay and the coordinates are the and uh, this this latitude and the longitude so it is equivalent of this in the celestial sphere is altitude and azimuth so i will uh, uh, show the figure and there is another thing called equ uh, coordinate system called equatorial coordinate system The for for which the fundamental plane is the celestial equator, and the poles are celestial poles, and the 
coordinates are declination and right ascension or our angle and similarly for the motion of planets and moon and all that it is more convenient to use some what is known as the ecliptic coordinate system where the fundamental plane is ecliptic and the poles are the ecliptic poles and the coordinates are the latitude and longitude celestial latitude and longitude. So, essentially same idea, but used in different ways and used for motion of celestial objects and these are the <coughs> Indian uh, names for that they also use um, uh, this kind of uh, coordinate systems and altitude is called Utkrama, Azimuth is called Udagra, our angle is called Nata, declination is called Kranti, then there is what is known as right ascension I will soon show you, Kala, declination again is again is same thing but Kranti, this first is different and then for the ecliptic coordinate longitude is called by various names, Boga, Dorja and all that latitude is Vikshepa. So, the reference circle Kshitija, so for the horizontal system is called Kshitija and prime meridian is called Dakshinotara Vrutta and for the uh, our angle equatorial system is Dakshinotara Vrutta is the prime meridian and the reference plane is Vishivad Vrutta or Ghatika Vrutta and similarly for the right ascension declination is Vishivad Vrutta and Ghatika Vrutta and declination is the Tadviparita. Uh, the same actually which is essentially Kranti only is this thing and the okay. the longitude for the uh, ecliptic the reference circle is the Kranti Vrutta and the latitude is Vikshepa that is Vikshepa Vrutta Tad Viparita of this thing of that. So, for the horizontal system or all azimuth system sometimes it is called. So, essentially this is your celestial sphere this is your object. So, this how much it is elevated above the horizon. So, that is the altitude and suppose you take some point northern point let us say then north to this point you see you draw the great circle passing through the object and the zenith so, that is called a vertical circle. So, this angle where it hits the horizon at point B intersects it at B. So, then this is called azimuth. So, this is this horizontal angle is called azimuth in nowadays even now in physics but it is earlier used for astronomy. So, this is altitude and this is called a zenith distance altitude plus zenith distance is 90 degrees <coughs> and you can use any units for that you can use it degrees you can use minutes as in Indian astronomy sometimes you can use uh, radians also, but uh, normally in Indian astronomy text is expressed in terms of minutes and sometimes in degrees also amsha also is used. Okay. So, this is the horizontal or altazimuth system you might you know some people who are handled telescopes they will know that you know if you go and ask for a telescope. So, they will say is it do you want altazimuth mount or equatorial mount okay. So, that is you know the how you will observe I mean what are the ways you can rotate the thing and all that. So, these are the altazimuth system and similarly equatorial system is you know now this is your celestial sphere and this is your north celestial pole. Now, draw a great circle through east west you know and which is perpendicular to this OP draw a circle which is perpendicular to the celestial I mean this uh, axis OP and which is intersecting the horizon at E and V that will be by definition that will be the east and west points. So, that is called a celestial equator which will be an imaginary circle in the sky which is parallel to the terrestrial equator. So, that is the this thing and then from this you drop a perpendicular arc from P to this. So, then suppose your object is this what is the distance between this object and the equator in angular measure. So, that is called declination that is called declination. So, this is and in this, this angle you know how much it is moved from this this is called a prime meridian. So, how much it has moved? So, it has come from here and it is moved like this by how much angle it has moved. So, that is called the hour angle. So, that will it in fact tell you how many in angles it will tell you <coughs> how much it has moved in the sky after uh, crossing the meridian. The meridian is you know 
that uh, uppermost this thing, this circle, see, this vertical circle. So that how much has it moved? How many degrees has it moved? Okay. So that is that uh, 15 degrees is essentially equal to one degree, one hour, right? Because 360 degrees will correspond to 24 hours. So from that you can find out how much time has elapsed after the meridian transit. You see. So this is the equatorial system. And in this also there is a declination and hour angle. So that are these things. Sometimes it may be more convenient to use what is the right ascension. So there is a point called equinox, which is intersection point between equator and ecliptic. So the equinox and this. So draw the perpendicular from x to this celestial equator. The angle between this equinox and this point that is called a right ascension. So <coughs> that is also used sometimes and uh, so there is an angular measure along the equator. Anyway, so this you had either uh, altitude and uh, azimuth or declination and our angle, so they will be related to this spherical trigonometry relation. So these are the things which are related. And the ecliptic system, especially for measuring the longitude of positions of planets and all that, you have to use this even actually for sun also. So, you have to moon, sun and moon also. So, there you know, so you are considering a circle which is the apparent path of the sun. So, it that intersect the equator at point this length this. So, then suppose this is your star or any object. So, draw a perpendicular like this. So, this angle that is called the longitude, celestial longitude and this call is called the latitude or vikshepa, vikshepa in uh, Indian this thing and uh, lambda is called uh, this thing. So, sometimes it is called just graha or sputak graha or sometimes sign of that is called dorgia. So, from the context it is clear you know, sometimes it is just called graha. So, this is the angle. So, everywhere the two angles, one angle along the reference circle and one angle perpendicular to that. So, that is the and all these coordinates are related. Beta is related to all this delta and all that ecliptic system. So, this is the ecliptic system. So, this is the equatorial system and uh, this is the altazimus system. So, all of them will be used in. Now, declination formula. <coughs> so, remember what is uh, declination. So, it essentially this this is the angular measure between the object and the equator that is called declination. You know suppose it is moving you know it is actually situated in the ecliptic also. Okay. So, then in that case so that longitude celestial longitude will come. So, how is this related to longitude delta? So, that we can find out. So, for instance I have written here in this diagram. So, this is the equator celestial equator this is the ecliptic that is the apparent path of the sun and planets also moon they also will be very close to this ecliptic. So, suppose if the object is situated here. So, then the angle between these planes you see you see this plane this is the ecliptic plane O is gamma O A. So, that is the ecliptic plane and O gamma B you know this one this is the equatorial plane the angle between them is this epsilon or the called the obliquity of ecliptic. ecliptic. Which ah. is the Akshya Ketrani. Akshya? Akshya Ketrani. 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 Not the terrestrial latitude. This is the celestial latitude. Shanku no? No, 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 it is not a Shanku. No, no, this is a motion. This is not a Shanku. This is the, you know, uh, yeah, I am describing the coordinates of the uh, celestial object, not the shadow. Then that, that is nothing to do with shadows. No, no, no. The Triprasna Adhikara, this Bhubhuti comes, but is how to describe the coordinates of the uh, okay. object. You see, that is what we are discussing. And the declination, how much it is above the equator. So, that is what we are trying to see. And I am saying that, for instance, for sun, we rewrite it in terms of longitude. Longitude is what is given. So, then what is its declination? You see, the declination is nearly 23 and a half degrees at uh, June 21st, 
and it is 0 on March 21st on any other day it is because the declination will be the longitude will be 90 degrees for June 21st. So, and in between March 21st and this will be in between some value you know. So, that is lambda and how is declination related to lambda that is what we are trying to think. And then in that case you can drop a perpendicular from here to this and here to the plane of the equator both. So, then this O A B and this O prime A prime B prime both planes will be perpendicular to the equator and this will be clearly sin delta or sin delta and by similarity of triangles you see this will be or this angle will be lambda you know this angle gamma O A prime is lambda and this line will be O prime A prime that is sin lambda. So, this is or this is or sin lambda this is epsilon and this is or sin epsilon and this is or sin delta by proportionality of the triangles you get this. So, this can be derived using planar triangles. So, this is this is a well known result you know in Indian in fact any astronomy astronomy will have to know this otherwise they cannot perform any calculation they cannot give any get any useful result. So, this is the declination formula all these things are very clearly explained in Yukti Basha. So, as I told you most of the text will give only the results and how to use the results they are given, but explanation of all these things you know or you should go for some commentary and Yukti Basha is more or less a commentary especially the astronomy part it is really a commentary on the Tantra Sangraha where all kinds of results are given in a systematic manner. So, he, there they will explain all these things you know all these things I will come to that typically what is given in Yukti Basha you will know. So, a spherical trigonometry in modern text and Tantra Sangraha and Yukti Basha. So, all the results based on spherical trigonometry are exact in Tantra Sangraha ok. So, um, and in the earlier text most of the relations were, were correct, but for sm some small errors at certain places especially some things which will come in the context of eclipses called nonogesimal and all. So, I do not want to go into technicality there are some side, side things which are you know not correct, but not very inaccurate actually numerically they were not very bad, but uh, they were not correct anyway and in Tantra Sangraha all these errors are removed and uh, all the results are exact and correct the spherical uh, astronomy results. So, they all are correct of course, planetary motion there may be some parameters may be you know not coincide with the modern parameters, but the model is all again correct we are not going into that now. But what I am is saying is spherical as far as spherical trigonometry is concerned all the relations are absolutely correct. And more about the treatment of problems related to spherical trigonometry is very systematic. So, they were there the, the, in so called Triprasna Dikara all these things will be there and here the treatment is more systematic you know you will go from we will see to one example we will take how it is more systematic. And uh, <coughs> but Tantra Sangraha gives only results, but not explanations. So, Yukti Basha explains all these results systematically in its astronomy part. In fact, the earlier sections of astronomy part in Yukti Basha closely resemble corresponding sections in a modern text on spherical astronomy. So, if you in fact, earlier people had this astronomy in BSc, some of them I think still have. So, they will start with the celestial sphere, they will start with horizon, they will try to talk about the cardinal points, zenith and celestial equator, all these system of coordinates and all that. Exactly similar things are there in Yukti Basha but in a different language and uh, <coughs> all these things uh, figures are not written they are explained ok they are you know described. So, but if uh, somebody knows some astronomy one can easily recreate the figure. So, we have done that when we wrote the explanatory notes for Yukti Basha. So, all the, 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 there is no ambiguity always you know one can uh, clearly see what he is trying to say. So, all these things are very uh, you know. Uh, uh, clearly and uh, systematically explained. So, it is a <coughs> really a textbook actually and there is goes in a way, way similar to modern um, astronomy part, but derivations and proofs or results are quite different from the modern treatment because in the modern this thing you will go to cosine formula and then immediately 
do various results. Cosine formula is not there, but something equivalent to that is there. Okay. So, but the treatment of problems is you know you will get the eventually the same result, but using slightly different principles. So, that is what I am trying to say. If the declination type formula play a crucial role in the method of derivation and in the following we give some results from Tanta Sangraha only indicating the proofs in Yukti Basha. So, basically they will use this kind of a formula declination kind of a formula and then find the uh, rule of proportion. So, declination time formula and rule of proportions. So, that is what is used. So, essentially what I am trying to say is what they consider how it is posed in Yukti Basha. Of course, it was understood in earlier texts also, but uh, they might not have stated it like Yukti Basha which is a textbook. So, what he, he what how he describes is suppose you got two great circles. Suppose there are two great circles intersecting at some point and suppose the inclination is known. So, then suppose you consider a point which is some anything some angle some arc on one of the circles then drop a perpendicular to the plane of the other circle drop a perpendicular to the plane of the circle, other circle what is the length of the perpendicular ok. So, that is how he poses, poses the problem and that is give what gives rise to the declination formula because this will be essentially some kind of if it is the ecliptic this is the declination and this is the perpendicular or sin delta. How it is related to this arc and this and if you have uh, so for some this is a simple uh, problem, but for some complicated problems you have to use this several times you know you have to consider I will give you an example various kinds of circles have to be considered. So, then it becomes a little more uh, uh, this thing detailed and but principle is the same it may be become tedious, but not difficult you have to be patient you see. Anybody who wants to do <laughs> astronomy, theoretical astronomy, even very elementary thing have to be patient because you have to draw the figures and all that and see you know and it will be very confusing. <laughs> Only patience is the most, most important thing. So, 10 problems in Tanta Sangraha he says, Iha Shanko Nata Kranti Digagra Kshesu Panchasu Vayor Vayor Anayanam Nana Vayor Vayor Anayanam Dashadha Syat Paraihi Tribihi Sa Shankavo Natakranti Digakshaha Sanatas Tatha Apakrama Digagraksha Digaksho Kranti Samyutau Digaksha Viti Niyante Dvanvi Buye Taraihi Tribihi. So, here you know out of the five quantities Shanku Nata Kranti Digagra and Aksha Shanku Nata Kranti Digagra Shanku is you know related to the zenith distance. Nata is the related to the hour angle, Kranti is related to the declination, Digagra is related to the so called azimuth and Naksha is related to the latitude. Okay. So, here Shanku Nata Kranti Digagra Shesho Panchasu clearly five of them are there. Vayo Vayo Anayanam. So, two of them, two of them can be determined Dashagha Syat Parai Sribi, two of them can be determined from the three others and this can be done in 10 different ways ok. So, because phi c 2 or phi c 3 which is equal to 10 and this happens in 10 different ways. So, you form the pairs systematically Shanku, Nata, Kranti, Digagra and Daksha then Nata you leave that because all, all those involving this have come Nata, Kranti, Digagra so like that. So, they are all determined. So, so, Shanku is zenith distance I will. So, this is what he is talking about. So, this is the celestial sphere, this is the diurnal circle. So, this is our angle and this is the, the so called azimuth. So, here the azimuth is measured from this is called a prime vertical. The vertical circle which is goes from zenith to the z is khamadhya you know. So, this is the east this is the uh, lower portion. So, the angle between this you know to draw this to this. So, this angle is called uh, uh, 
digagra digagra is called so called azimuth so this is the declination kranti this is the aksha you know latitude the angle is the latitude and this avagrang nata it's called nata it will tell you how much time it has taken sun is sun or any any object is moving like this okay so you draw the you know you can imagine as if this line is you know carrying like this you know is rotating like this so this angle is called h so that is nata so shanku shanku is cos z as we will see shanku is cos z basically nata kranti is this digagra aksha okay so five quantities so we one can determine two from the other three so this is a table it gives shanku is zenith distance is r sin z nata is our angle is r sin h so normally sin itself is you know more useful to call it as you know sin itself you give the name so kranti is r sin delta but sometimes you know, so rarely sometimes kranti may mean declination only or also but so one has to be little careful you know so people who are working in the area will know normally what is correct so digagra is called amplitude or r sin a and aksha is latitude r sin phi phi is the latitude of the place yeah so these are the how to determine two from the other three out of these five quantities so that is the 10 dasha prashna that's what he is saying so you have got z h delta a phi so you can form these pairs first you have the z with z all form all the pairs the four of them clearly so now z is exhausted now you take h with delta h with a h by h by phi that is three of them then delta a and delta phi and a and phi so this how is actually clearly ordering 10 pairs that can be formed out of the five quantities associated with dasha prashna so versus 6287 in tantra sangraha describe the explicit procedure for the solution of these 10 problems the detailed demonstration of the solution of each of these problems is presented in jeshta devas yukti bhasha so this will tell you i mean how to i mean how it is it will be interesting to know you know how the results are presented okay in shlokas so that is the thing you know there are no equations so how do you describe it so the equations are implicitly given by this uh, uh, shlokas ashagra lambaka vyasta trijya bhakta chakotika bujakshajya tayor vargayoga yo vargayoho tayor vargayoga moolam shuti haraha krantyaksha vargo tad varga tyaktva kotyo tayoho pade kuryat krantyakshayo ghatam kotyor ghatam tatha param saumye gole tayor yoga bhedat yamye tu ghatayo the ashagra multiplied by lambaka and divided by trijya is koti etc so this is what he is saying we will we will see what is the result this gives the shanku that is formed in the desired direction and uh, when it is northern uh, part of the celestial sphere a uh, southern part there is some difference so he is telling all this here tantra sangraha this tantra sangraha the verse is in tantra sangraha and it is explanation is in yukti bhasha so tantra sangraha is a so called a tantra text so they will not give much theory they will give all the results results are there explanations have to be found in the commentaries and yukti bhasha gives the tantra sangraha by nilakanta somaya ji ha nilakanta so a lot of reference was there to nilakanta you know the infinite series and aryabhatiya bhasha and so on and so forth nilakanta somaya ji so who was in the, this work was uh, uh, composed in 1500 ce and yukti bhasha came a little maybe 25 30 years later so jeshta deva wrote yukti bhasha which is uh, commentary on this thing but actually only the astronomy part it is a commentary on tantra sangraha the mathematics part it takes off you know on all um, no results in kerala uh, mathematics so there is more or less an independent thing though is humble enough to say that it is you know whatever is there in tantra sangraha i am explaining whatever results are there in, in tantra sangraha to know this you know i am giving all this explanation that's how you goes so finally the result is and similarly there are some conditions 
when the sub product of the Clancy inductor is greater than there is no shanku, there is no solution like that, you know. So, here the problem is to obtain zenith distance and hour angle in terms of declination, latitude, and amplitude. So, z then or or to be determined in terms of delta phi and j. Okay. So, so these the result is giving cos z is sin phi sin delta plus or minus cos phi sin a into this. So, that is what he is saying, you know, take sha aksha, take its square, okay, take its coti, take its square, and multiply it by the square of the uh, digagra, subtract the declination from this, and all the whole of this you take the square root and multiply it by the lambaka, which is the this thing. So, that is how it is expressed. So, this is a very there is no ambiguity. I mean, there may be some places where it may be interpretation is required, but the most of the places is very clear, you know, this is the uh, <coughs> expression which is implied in that. So, z and h, so phi delta and a are there. So, z and h are determined in terms of this thing, okay. And then once you determine z, you can find out h. So, the solution of this problem. So, what is given? So, a is given, the declination is given, the latitude of the place is given. So, what are you determining? You are finding the zenith distance or the altitude is 90 minus that, zenith distance and hour angle you are finding. So, for that, of course, uh, so the Nilakanta gives only the results. So, similarly, he will give explicit results for all the 10 problems, and uh, Yukti Basha gives the mm. proof of these things. So, I will just write, I am just giving the um, uh, basic method and how they uh, 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 describe various uh, circles and all that. So, he considers the celestial sphere, he say you take the celestial equator, write the you know diurnal circle, it is called Ahor Atra Vrutta. I mean that is the daily circle associated with the sun. Okay. So, then what you do is you know suppose this is your uh, object here, okay. So then this is this thing here. So then this is called with the corresponding amplitude. This is called ishta digrutta. You write a circle which is you know at this angle r k from this. It is called ishta digrutta. And then you say called the pole of ishta digrutta. This is that, which is 90 degrees from here, okay. And then from this you know you write a uh, this thing called viparita digruta, which is you know in an uh, perpendicular to this. So, various uh, circles are this thing, and then you draw various circles, okay. So, all these circles you have to find, and then he will tell you how to do this thing. He will run into 2 3 pages. So, but patiently you have to plot through that, and you will get the result. So, please uh, you can have a look at the Yukti Basha. So, we are given all the so, and as I told this is all given in the, uh, it is not verse, it is not sloka in Yukti Basha, it is a prose only, so in prose he has given all these things. So, this we have translated it into this figure, okay. So, and then you know work with that and show that, so that is what one has to you know, the research scholars here working on Indian mathematics and astronomy, they have to do some such things you see, you have to draw the figures and all that from what is stated in the work ok. So, this is the thing. So, <coughs> that is one of the these things and all the others also patiently they are explained ok in the uh, work uh, Yukti Basha, all the other results also, all the nine also ok. So, there is no need to <laughs> show them you see it will be overwhelming to say the least. <laughs> Not difficult, but you know lot of details are there. You know that vrutta, this vrutta, you intersect this, that, that, all that, there is angle, find this angle, use this formula, so like that. So, lot of detail only, but principally is quite simple. So, then I will slightly different thing I will talk about it. So, in this work, Santa Sangra, he talks about, talks about distance between centers of solar and lunar disks. Disc. It is related to spherical trigonometry. So, what is the, this thing is the you know sun is there and moon is there 
first we think that you know they are <coughs> the relative position is the difference between the longitudes of sun and moon okay now, but that will not give you the separation really because moon has a latitude so moon is away from the ecliptic and uh, even sun because of so called parallax you know all these things are uh, explained are described with reference to the center of the earth for the observer you have to the his angle will be slightly different so that is called the effect of parallax so what i am saying is if you are see suppose you are observing some object let us say moon okay so you are observing from here okay so there is some reference line let us say and suppose this is your uh, celestial sphere so you are observing from here okay so then this is the direction but you are observing from the surface of the earth so then this is the direction and there is a difference between this and this so the, the zenith distance for this is z and the zenith distance so this is z0 i mean imagine a person sitting on the center of the earth and observing it with the same kind of a, a sphere celestial sphere so he will observe it the zenith distance is z0 and this on this anyway so this angle is called parallax it's called parallax so the very place is important role in eclipse calculation and all that so because of that sun also will be slightly de deflected so now in that case sun also will be deflected and this is the ecliptic uh, circle so moon has come out of that so it is in m prime and sun is in s, s prime so then what uh, the essentially the procedure says you know draw a perpendicular arc from this to the ecliptic plane similarly from this to the ecliptic plane so then this is the, the s double prime and n double prime so now uh, so, uh, yeah the purpose, there are the projections but what you want to know is the real distance angular separation between sun and moon what is observed the observed locations of sun and moon the angular separation between them so for that so that distance you see but um, uh, so one has to find that distance essentially you have to find that chord on the sphere chord this, this thing angular separation of course corrected angular separation will come later so this chord you know this essentially it gives a distance between these points the actually observed points s prime m prime so he writes it as you know so then you drop this perpendicular from s prime to on the plane and then he says that you know that the three things so this is the separation you see s yes, double prime q prime is the separation along this line is a perpendicular line and m prime m double prime q prime is the separation along this line this horizontal line separation along this separation along this and then there is a separation is a plane of the ecliptic so one has come out this way one has come out that way or both might have come out the same way so that separation the three separations are there you have to square them add them and take the square root that is the distance between the two quantities so this is essentially same as in three dimensional coordinate geometry okay so because suppose you have in two dimensional coordinate geometry what do you have the distance between two points so these are the coordinate axis x and y let us say suppose one point is there x1 y1 are the coordinates and the other point is there with coordinates x2 y2 so join these things so then then distance d squared is equal to x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square so this is a x2 minus x1 is the separation along the x axis y2 minus y1 is the separation along the y axis so the total separation is this you have to take the squares of them and then take the square root add them and then take them that is the distance and if it is three dimensional you see one is here and let's say one is here so three uh, uh, coordinates are needed you see x1 y1 z1 so in three dimension 
in three dimensions the uh, generalization of this is d squared is equal to x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus y 2 minus y 1 whole square plus z 2 minus z 1 whole square. So, this will be the distance square. So, this is a separation along x axis, this is a separation along y axis, this is a separation of the z axis. So, these three are taken, they are squared and take the sum and then take the square root. Precisely the thing is being said, you know. So, they do not say coordinate axis and all that, they will say that, you know, separation along this thing, that is one Rashi. They say that say S double prime, Q prime is one Rashi. Rashi does not mean not necessarily zodiacal sign, quantity kind of thing, one Rashi. Then this is another Rashi along a perpendicular line, and then this one, this along the you know perpendicular to the plane of this, this uh, slide, perpendicular to the plane of this slide, there is another Rashi that is the separation along that. So you take the squares of all these things, sum them and take the square root. So that is the distance between centers of solar and lunar disk. So that is the result, and of course this will depend upon these various things will depend upon the difference in longitudes of sun and moon their parallaxes and moon's latitude and other. All those details are of course given. So, these are some of the things which are discussed and there are some things which are really interesting and rather sophisticated things which they do using spherical trigonometry. Say for instance, what is the Chandra Shungonati they call it you know in the celestial sphere. So, moon suppose moon is like this. So, this is the crescent moon, okay. the crescent moon is there, suppose this is the shape of this then how is what in to what angle is it inclined to the horizontal plane kind of a thing. So, that is called Chandra Shunga Unnati, okay. the horns of the moon how much it is this thing. So, that also uses in a nice uh, you should have very cleverly you should do the all these calculations. So, they are there in the so, I will just give you some flair of the you know the kind of things that are done in complicated uh, reasonably um, advanced for that time you see and, and the, uh, 500 years or 600 years back also for that time it is fairly somewhat advanced and sophisticated topic. So, they could handle it in a systematic manner and uh, all results are the because that is applied you, you useful for daily problems for finding the positions of planets and eclipses and all that they are all in all, all these things will be very useful. So, that is what they are doing spherical trigonometry. So, these are normally all these things are discussed in a, uh, this thing called three prashna the three uh, problems dik desha kala okay. or sometimes also called chaya prakaranam the chapter on shadows <laughs> that also is there. All these things are there. In Tantra Sangra, actually, it is nearly 172 verses out of 420 or so are on this. The references are given here. Okay, I think I will stop here.